everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Garbage Horror Haunt Review 2016, and we're doing a new one. We are. We've never been here before. We've never been here before. They've been open five years. We've never been. It's the Freight Trail, and let's just call it Lafayette, Louisiana, because no one knows where the hell Scott is. Yeah. (laughs) Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Yes. Uh, It's actually, like, right near Lafayette. Yeah, two miles past it. It's basically Lafayette. Uh, So, yes, this is an outdoor trail haunt. Mm -hmm. In central southern Louisiana, I guess is the best way to right. describe it, location. And it was definitely an interesting experience haunting. Yes. I don't think I've had one quite like it, but go ahead. No, I do want to mention that it was a charity haunt. Yes. They are, uh, Literacy Inc. Yes. is their, uh, their charity, mm-hmm. because nothing scarier than not being able to read was yes. their tagline. And I thought that was actually pretty catchy. It is. <laughs> and that's it's really actually, cute. That's really good. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely a, a worthwhile cause, if absolutely nothing else. Right. And that being said, this is going to be kind of a weird review for us. Yeah. It's going to be a little technical, I have a feeling. Yeah, we had a two-hour talk about it on the way home. Yeah, because that's the thing this about... This is going to be shorter. Don't run away. <laughs> Don't run away. But that's kind of the thing about going to a haunt in Lafayette. Is you have two hours on the way back to talk about it. Right. Once again, no audio, nothing playing in the car, just us jibber-jabbering with each other about this haunt. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's kind of start at the beginning. Okay. You, you arrive at this haunt... The box office and parking is on the opposite side of the street right. from the haunt itself. Right. The box office area is decorated like a morgue. Yeah-ish. It, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty neatly decorated. The inside area is. Right. Um, it, it's, it's interesting. It's like the 13th Gate does the same thing with their box office on the other side of the street of the attraction. But the 13th Gate case, it's a very slow, very quiet, even when they're open, city road it's like a, right because most of the actual businesses around are closed at that time other yes. than the casino so and well, don't go on an lsu night yeah do not go on an if, lsu if game at home. that is the greatest yeah. 13th game <laughs> tip you're ever going to yeah. get do not go on the same night as an lsu home game yeah boom all right <laughs> back to the ferry trail yes but this road is actually a pretty fast pretty rural road right so it's a little bit scarier to cross yeah um they have police officers there who will actually stop traffic and let the groups cross, both going to the haunt and coming back from it. Right. So that's pretty cool, but it's still one of the more unusual ways of getting into a haunt I've seen. It is, especially when there's nobody getting in your group yeah. to cross the road and you have to wait. You're like, oh yeah, we, like, the police officer's like, yes, we need to wait until you have a group to cross. I'm like, well, okay. Ten minutes. Anybody? Hello, I see you people over there. Come on, join the group. Yeah. Get in line. And yeah, so that that was a little bit tragic. And honestly, the entire part on that side of the road was a rough experience in general. Yeah. I mean, it had music that, in my opinion, was just way too loud. Right. We couldn't communicate with each other. We're trying to decide if we need to go to the bathroom, how we're paying for this. And we're trying to shout each other. I shouted, I need to use the porta potty. Way louder than should ever be shouted. <laughs> yeah, that's um, very true. And th- because of that music, and also it just seemed like there it wasn't fun. It didn't feel connected with the rest of the haunt experience. Right. And so I guess the first thing I'm gonna say is try to find a way to bring more of the haunt over there. They did like some decorating. The decorating looked pretty cool. Right. But more of that haunt spirit to that side of the road. Yeah. It, it needs to tie in a little better for my book. But once we did get the police officer stop traffic, once we did find the magic ring and climb the mountain and drop it into the volcano, I might be thinking of the wrong story. Maybe. Maybe. Um. We did get to their side, and then the front of house stuff uh, there on that side of the road was just excellent. Par excellence. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Um, I really loved the way they did the queue on that side. Yeah, it was a very good queue they, they, they pulled uh, some heavy pages from Disney and some theme parks on that one. There's a lot of stuff to do and see in the queue line on that side. You actually walk through two buildings. Right. You have a scare actor working. That's only I mean, several scare actors working. One hard scare actor, two line scare actors. Right. At least when we went, that's the count. Right. Um, you have some, and have, you have an animatronic there. Mm-hmm. You've got you have stuff, two animatronics. Two animatronics, that's right. There's two. Yep. You have people interacting with you. Right. And and there's a selfie shack. And there is a selfie shack. That's where I, we did our little promo oh, video. Yes. Also, another thing to say, mark that as a selfie shack. Yeah. Because it was we, we were a little unnerved because we went through the uh, first shack, which is the rules. Right. And it had all the no videography, no photography, and all that. And we're like, okay, yeah, yeah, standard stuff. Right. And then we got to what we thought was the selfie shack. It looked and felt like a selfie shack to us. So we shot the promo, 
And then when we left, it was, wait a minute, they said no photography or videography. Yeah, so we asked. We, we asked, got the clearance, and by the way, 65,000 people. Yeah. What the hell is Where up? Where are you guys? Who are you guys? Write us, let us so, know. Let us know, seriously, let us know how you found that video. I'm very flipping curious. Yeah. I have not a clue. But anyways, we're glad to have you. Yeah. More than welcome to the channel. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, and on that note, please let us know. But then you go into the haunt. Right. And they were, things are kind of a, a mixed bag for me. Yeah. Um, How do you want to crack this nut? You tell me. You, you lead a little bit. Well, we've talked a lot about yes, on other haunt trails, the difference between a smooth path that you can enjoy where you're walking. And not even think about it. It's just like walking right. on carpeting or concrete or whatever. And a not so great path. Where you're like stump, tree, root, tree part. I have no idea what, but it's hard and I'm going to trip right. you. Yeah. Yeah. This was somewhere in between. <laughs> yeah. It was mostly very well yeah. kept. We only found a couple of roots. Yeah. And one of them was admittedly kind of sort of probably my fault for taking an unusual way around a turn. Yeah. But I do that. That's me. Um, but still, yeah, we only found a couple of places where there were trip hazards right. of any sort. So I, the trail itself overall very, very well maintained and it shows. Mm -hmm. and like I said, it's not like as immaculate as Waterloo, if you go back to that review right. for us. But it's pretty damn close. Yeah. I mean, Waterloo, I didn't even think about the trail other than, hey, pretty lights, you know, yeah. after about yeah. five minutes of it. So, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a tough act to follow, I'm just saying. It is. But the, the point is, yeah, the trail overall pretty well done. Mm -hmm. And there was a surprising amount to do. They had a lot of builds along yeah. the way in this. A they lot of did. different sequences. A lot of really nice builds, yeah. too. They were very well done. Yeah, this is a charity um, haunt, so you're looking at budget builds. Right. But obviously, a lot of love, a lot of care, and a lot of experience went into this. Yeah, that first building was really cool. Yeah, it was. Um, I don't know what the actor said there. Sorry. Yeah. He, um, yeah, he when, started when, talking well before we got yeah, to the hearing range. When we went through the very, very front door of the haunt, we're almost almost, we were almost immediately greeted by an actor who was talking to us and interacting with us. Right. But we were at the tail end of our group pretty much. I think we were at the middle at that part. Yeah. But we were not at the front. Um, <laughs> and we could not hear. Right. So we could not hear until we got right up on him. By then, he was mostly done. Yeah. So I, I have no idea what he said, but yes, the first building was excellent. They had a yeah. lot of great set pieces in there. Yeah, they did. Wonderful, interesting stuff. But I noticed something almost immediately that bothered me. Okay. And it's not with the haunt. Well, it, it is, but it isn't at the same time. And that is our group was going at about one and a half times faster than I personally would want to go. Yeah. I have my haunt pace. Yeah. It's admittedly on the slow side. Right. I like to look at stuff. I like to give the actors every opportunity to come out and do their thing. You know, even if they can't scare me, they let me see what they're doing. Right. To, to, to perform their trade. Yeah. Um, they worked hard on they it. They worked hard on it. So I want to see it. Um, so I, I, I tend to go slow. This group was moving very quickly. Yeah. And I felt like I was really walking hard to keep up. Yeah, me too. So that part was a little bit weird, and at first I was thinking, okay, you know, not every group's going to be a winner. Right. You go to enough haunts, you're going to get stuck with that crap group that just wants to bolt through absolutely everything. Yeah. But then about halfway, about halfway into it, we ran into the group in front of us. Not a surprise, the way we were moving. Yeah. But then the group behind us ran into us. Yeah. And the group behind them ran into now a conga line. Yep. And they put pretty wide gaps between the groups at the door. Yes, they do. So that really was telling me something, and it tells me that something is off with the flow in this haunt. Right. And it's further indicated by what they said on the way in. Yes. Because she's told us, you know, they're like reading us the rules and other information, and said, this is a lengthy, you've got 20 acres of woods, it's going to take you 45 minutes to get through it. And she was very specific with that time. Yeah. It's going to take you 45 minutes. We timed the haunt. We time every haunt. Yeah. We timed the haunt. It was 25 minutes for us. Right. Um, and I don't think it's that they were lying or misleading. I'm pretty sure they walked through it. It took them 45 minutes to get through it. Right. To they activate and every, everything. everything and, and you see everything. Yeah. Um, they assumed their customers would move it at roughly the same pace, and they don't. <laughs> no. It seems like at least three out of four groups that we <laughs> interacted with do not. Right. And that is a problem, and it impacts the entire haunt. Yeah, it does. Because there were a lot of animatronics 
but there were also a lot of just still mannequin props. Mm -hmm. And you didn't know which were supposed to move and which weren't. Yeah. So we would walk past something that looked cool, and then hear it go off as yeah, we were like, like ten feet behind 10 us. Feet, yeah. Like ten, fifteen feet behind us. Like they had, they really like using the props to like encroach on the zone. They right. Start back and they rush in through various methods. And yeah, when I, a few of them, when we were lagging behind the group, like really came at us, and it was awesome. It looked really right. cool. Um, but most of the time, we're hearing it and turning around and seeing it in out of, out of our peripheral vision, and that's just frustrating. Yeah, it is. And I think that part of that, I think a lot of that's because they're setting the timing on whatever, I don't know if they're using trips or pressure pads or whatever, but they're setting it where they think the timing is going to be and people are going through it faster, and as a result, it's hitting late. Right. And also it's frustrating for the human actors because they did, they did the smart thing. They have actors set up to scare the same group multiple times that mm -hmm. pop around at various points. Right. Very smart. But, man, these actors were having the whole ass. They were. I respect that energy so oh, hard. Oh, yeah. I'm 36. I ain't got that anymore, dude. <laughs> you, guys, you guys got it, man. You yeah. do it. You, you do you. I can't do that. Right. Well, and not only that, but um, with the props going off so late, it, makes, it could make you miss your cues. Yeah, yeah if you're cueing based on when the werewolf goes off. Right. Because working in Hoss, you, you learn the cues of where the group yeah. is. Yeah. And so if it's going off 10 feet after you pass, well, they're probably already to you. Yeah. And like I said, when, when a haunt we worked at, we timed everything by the electric chair. Right. We could hear the ele pneumatic, ele <laughs> you could hear the pneumatic <laughs> electric chair probably in the next county. But, yeah. But the point remaining, oh, Parrish, I'm sorry, we're in yeah. Louisiana. I forgot myself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Um, but you could probably hear it in the next parish. So that was our cue. We knew roughly 5, 10, whatever minutes after that, they'd be coming our way. If you're relying on those types of cues, it makes it more difficult. But like I said, these guys, they were getting the scares. They were getting to their, their marks. Right. But they were having to haul ass. They were. I was watching these guys dart through the woods like madmen sometimes trying to catch these groups. Yeah. And like I said, it's just everything was moving really, really fast. And apparently it wasn't just our group. If we're just our group, it's, hey, you know, what are you going to do? Right. Not, not every group can be a winner, like I said. Yeah. Um... But, yeah, so that was really, really, I said, so mad respect for the actors here. Yeah. But I think part of the problem, oh, go ahead. And for the prop builders. And for the prop builders. And the, yeah, everyone. And the buildings. Yeah, everything I was. I mean, everything looked good. Yeah. The hard stuff, they got down. Yeah. It's the flow, this this basic thing that, admittedly, hey, we it, struggled without the ass. It, it, it's still, it's not easy. It's, it's super it difficult, especially in a trail haunt. And I think one of the issues they have is that the trail is really, really, really wide. Yeah. It's a, in most places like six to eight feet wide. Right. Mar demarked by rope. And while that's fine, it makes it so that if you get scared, your instinct is to run, which is what our group did a lot of. Right. And then when you are constantly doing what you're supposed to do, which is scare forward, which means you scare from behind, you keep hitting from behind, you're just putting more and more pressure on the accelerator for the group. Right. And so, you know, if I was going to say one thing there, it would be to probably include some scares from the front to slow people down. Because they had a few rooms that did that. Yeah. Yeah, and we actually did a long discussion on this specific topic. Yeah. How to fix their flow. Yeah. And I think another thing that would help is prop-based layout. Yeah. Narrow that that yeah. running path. Yeah, and put some, some obstacles of the props. on it. And yeah. Put some blind corners around it. So right. they can't just simply bulk. That's one thing I did notice when I was there was you leave one of the buildings. They have many, many, many right. buildings along this path. You leave one, you'd often see the next one in the distance. Mm -hmm. And it, you have a fundamentally a straight shot and maybe a few bends, but fundamentally a straight shot for yeah. you too. No difficulty seeing where you're going. So no. if, if you leave building A scared and you want to get to building B as fast as you can because you're an idiot and you don't <laughs> understand how haunts work right. and that building B is where the scary stuff is, right. you're just going to... You know, straight through it. Right. Um, and that, that does create a challenge for the actors, especially because like, most of the props were in the wooded areas. Yes. And, and a lot of the better scare actors were in those wooded areas, too. Right. And they were struggling because of that. So, yeah. I, I don't know. Something along those lines, I think, has to change. Right. Now, there was one part in there that we really oh, liked, yeah. and the timing was great on. Yes. The, the, the mine shaft sequence. Yes. That's what you're talking about, right? Yes. Because they did something that's ingenious. 
And so it was simple. And yeah. I've seen it done before, I know. But there was a little light in the corner, and I thought a prop was going to come out. So I'm looking down at the little light, and the girl dressed in all black beside her, beside it, just goes... Just a little bit up the side. Yeah. Psst. That's it. Like, she wants to tell me a secret. Yeah, and on the way out of that, this, I, I don't know if this was dumb luck or if it was skill and well rehearsed. It's kind yeah. of hard to tell. Sometimes you can't tell the difference. Right. But there was a sequence where, because there was a little bit of fog, not much, but a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you're transitioning from the fog area to the outside area. And there's a moment in between, too, especially if you have light coming this way. Which you did. Which you did in this situation. You have a moment where your vision is just whitewashed. You've got right. nothing. You have, you have nothing. And I'm walking out, I've got nothing, and all of a sudden there's an actor right here. Yep. Beautiful. Simple. Yep. Elegant. Got me to go, whoa, wait, what the... Yep. <laughs> I yeah. mean, yeah, it, it's not, it's, it's the beautiful type of scare that's not going to make me bold, and thank God, right? Because you, yeah. you don't want that, actually. <laughs> but it, but it's so beautiful and so well done, it really does impress me. So, they, yeah, they clearly had very talented actors, very, very enthusiastic people. Right. And if they could just, like, nail down and maybe um, choke down some of these running paths, they could really extend the amount of time it takes these groups to get through there, make right. it better for the props, make it better for the actors, and make it better for the people going through it. Yeah. Because the thing about it is this. We pay $20 per ticket. Right. 25 minutes for $20 is not a bad deal. No. Nope. Not a bad deal at all. No. Nope. By any metric of haunting I'm aware of, that's right. a good deal. Yes. So as long as it's a reasonably solid haunt, it's a good deal, you should feel good about that. Yeah. Um, but since they said 45 minutes, it didn't feel right. You made it made I was you feel braced like you and were, ready. For, yeah. I, was, I was geared up for 45 minutes. And I said, 25 minutes should have been plenty. Yeah. It, it's perfectly fine for a $20 on. That's perfectly right. reasonable. It's beyond reasonable. It's excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. A, 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 don't promise any time constraints. Maybe measure it in linear feet. Yeah. Say you've got, you know, th two miles to walk. Right. Because, you know... I, because, you know, if Usain Bolt hits your haunt and <laughs> just starts running as fast as he can, that haunt's going to get a lot shorter from a time standpoint. Right. So, But the distance isn't going to change. The distance isn't going to change. So that's one thing also. But, I mean, in the end, I, I come away with this feeling that it's a good haunt. Yeah. Maybe not a great one yet, but right. they've got some simple things they could adjust and make it a great haunt. Right, and this is their fifth year yeah. that they've been doing this. Yeah. Um, they do have some impressive stuff, like we said. Yeah, the build I, quality and some, and mo most of it was very good. Yeah, I like this haunt overall. Uh, I would recommend it. I do plan on taking new people to it at some point. Yes. Not this season because we don't have time. But, yeah. um, it's but a yeah, if you're definitely in the area or like 45 or even an hour and a half away. Yeah. If you're anywhere, you want... I'd say from Baton Rouge to Lake Charles area, that, yeah. that, that, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. It's definitely worth visiting and checking out. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, this is a, like I said, a very good haunt. They got very, very passionate people, and that really does show. Right. And I have mad respect for the build skills. I have mad, especially the the animatronics. Right. They built those. Yeah. Those are built. Yeah, I know. Those are not off the shelf. No. <laughs> That's really good stuff, and it really does show. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I, I, you, if we can adjust the flow, it'll all come together, and it will be a truly magnificent experience. Yes. I, that's my opinion of it. Yeah. And also, it'd be nice if, you know, to the whole crossing the road thing could somehow be streamlined. Right. But that, I, I, I don't Maybe have... have one of the character line actors, yeah. you know, drag you across or something. I, I don't but... have the easy answer for that one, though. No, no, no. I don't not, have a good answer for all. that one, I'm afraid. Yeah. But still, those are the only two things I had issues with. Everything else was really, really solid overall. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, Joe's Restaurant right nearby, yummy. Yes. Ask to keep your wristband, you'll get uh, 10% off. Yeah, 10% off discount. The burgers, excellent. Highly recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, also, um, if you are going to go and check it out, I would recommend actually trying a little bit later in the evening. Oh, that's a good idea. Than earlier, because we got there about 8.30. Yeah. There were a lot of teenagers, which explains probably some of the running. Yeah. So, if, if you want to skew a little bit older or maybe have a smaller group, yeah. nine-ish, because they, oh, they don't close until 11. Right. They're very adamant about that. They don't right. close until 11, so maybe skew into that 9.30, 10.30 range there. Right. You, you'll, yeah. get, you'll get an older crowd, and you'll probably have smaller groups, too. Yeah, that's well, my last thought. On. That's a very good thought. That's actually an excellent point. So, yeah, um, all good points. Solid haunt, lots of interesting stuff. Hopefully, this review helps them out a little bit. Yeah. That's my, I mean, that's what my genuine hope is. I like you guys. I'm looking forward to going back. Maybe not, maybe not this season, but soon. Yeah. 
On that note, everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was Garbage Horror Out of the Can, Haunt Review 2016 for the Freight Trail in Lafayette, Louisiana. We will see you guys next time. It's Scott. Oh, God. Great Scott! <laughs> Mediocre Scott! <laughs> <laughs>